In this video, we'll take a look at Excel 2013, Chapter 3, Skill-Based Training. Uh, this is the skill-based training where we're going to be working with charts. And there's a couple of spots in my IT lab that can be a little bit tricky for this one. So just want to run through this and make sure everybody is able to complete these tasks smoothly. Now some of them are pretty easy though. Uh, and the first one here is pretty straightforward too. We're going to simply select a range of cells and we are going to use the quick analysis feature to create a clustered column chart. You may know how to do a clustered column chart another way, but we want to use the quick analysis feature. So we highlight everything that we've got here in this range and we right click. Now one thing that does get people is when they right click, notice how it changed my selection. Um, this is just a my IT lab thing. Uh, when you do your selection, select everything and just choose to do your right click on that bottom cell, the one furthest from where you started. We'll do a quick analysis and we are going to do the clustered column chart. It's a chart, clustered column, and it's going to create that chart for us. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to move it to its own sheet. Excel likes to just dump the chart pretty much right on your data and let you find a home for it. So the home for this is going to actually be on its own sheet. We'll right click on that chart and we will move the chart over to a new sheet called column chart. Now we've got our chart created. Uh, it needs some work yet and we're going to take another look at some things later, uh, but we have that chart to start with. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select A5 to B12 and we're going to select D5 to D12. Now remember with Excel when you want to select non-contiguous spaces like uh, if you want to select this but not this part in between you need to hold down the control key to do that multiple select. Now we don't want this part but we did want the other two parts. so we need to hold down control when we're doing those additional selects so that this doesn't disappear. Okay, we're going to use the insert tab and we're going to create a clustered bar chart. Here's all of our charts over here and we're looking for the clustered bar chart. And it should be this one right here. Now depending on a number of factors you may or may not see the tool tips as you hover over items in my IT lab. I've noticed that a lot in the Excel simulations especially. And it can be a lot, um, it can be a big problem for us, uh, especially when we need to pick a particular theme or style. So I'm going to show you which ones you need to pick when we get to those points. Um, move the bar chart so that the top left corner of the chart is the top left corner of cell A16. So we'll scroll on down a little, we'll grab this chart and we'll toss it in here. Get it as close as you can and if it's close enough my IT lab will snap it into place. Um, scroll down here and we're going to adjust the height of the bar chart to 3.6 inches and the width to 5.3 inches. Chart is still selected. I'm going to go up here to format and this is where I can change the size of my chart. So I'm going to do 3.6 and then I'm going to click off of it so that my IT lab notices that I've made that change. And then I'm going to do 5.3 and I'm going to click off of that and my IT lab can notice my change and that can take effect. In Excel you could just click on to the next one, but my IT lab is checking to make sure you have those steps correct. So you do need to click away from it. Uh, we're going to change the chart from a clustered bar to a default stacked bar type. We can change our chart type in the design tab right over here. If you don't like the look of any chart you have or you just want a different look, you can always go over and change the chart type. We want this default stacked bar. These are stacked bars. Notice we're using one row here to represent both pieces of data at once. And we're just going to choose the default one and say OK. Notice the look is a little different for that particular chart. We're going to make another chart here. We're going to make a pie chart. You may have noticed as we selected ranges for those other charts that we were selecting up in this row as well. We were 
making sure we pulled these in so that these can be the headers in our column charts. In a pie chart, things are a little bit different. We want to select a portion of the whole. Um, just like a pie, you've got a whole pie, and then you've got things in that pie chart that are going to contain fractions of that pie. So for example, in this one we want to select A6 to D12, and in this case we want D6 to D12. If you summed these all up, you would have the number that represents the whole pie, and each of these is going to represent a slice of that pie, and these are the labels that are going to be associated with those slices. So it's a little bit different than a clustered chart or a line chart or anything like that. A pie chart shows your data much differently, and it's used for different purposes. So we'll go to the insert, and we are going to go to the pie chart, and we're just making a regular old pie chart. Uh, Tooltip's not showing up, but this one's the regular pie chart. And we're going to make that pie chart live on its own sheet as well. We'll move the chart to a new sheet named pie chart and say OK. And then we're going to explode out the software app developers slice. It's this orange slice over here. Now in my IT lab we're always looking for precision. We want exactly 6% explosion for this slice. Now you could try to drag that slice out. Just kind of left click on it and drag it away from the source. Sometimes that'll work fine. Sometimes you won't land right on the spot that you need. So rather than demonstrating pulling that piece of the pie out, I'm going to actually show you the other way to do it. Um, I'm just going to click on the pie chart as a whole, and it selects the whole pie chart. It said incorrect action, but it's just part of getting to what we need to do. And then if I click on just this one, from experience I know that it may actually inadvertently pull that out 6%. So I'm going to just click on this, this one over here, and I'm going to switch over to this one so it's highlighted, and unfortunately my IT lab recognized maybe a slight mouse movement of mine pulled that slice away from the pie chart. I still want to show you the right way to do it in case that doesn't happen for you. Plus, we need to know really how to do this. So I have Excel open here, the real Excel, and I have a pie chart. If I select my pie chart and I select just that one slice, I can pull that pie piece out. And this is what we couldn't really see in my IT lab. We can also change that point explosion if we right click and choose to format the data point. Over here on the side we have the option for point explosion. You can set that to 6 and when you click off of it, it will come out to the 6% amount and then we would close this. So that's the alternate way to complete this in my IT lab just in case your inadvertent click doesn't automatically consider that a successful task. So going back to my IT lab, uh, on to the next step. Okay, we're going to type in a new chart title for our bar chart. Since I'm using a laptop, uh, my, my vertical screen resolution is a little bit less than what I think my IT lab was intending. But it's still completely compliant and it meets the system requirements and it passes the home computer setup checks. So uh, unfortunately, you can struggle along with it, but it's not as good as working off of a high-res monitor. High-res monitor always seems to do a nicer job with this. So if you ever have the option, choose that. Um, in any case, we're going to go to the chart title here, and we're going to change this to projected number of jobs by 2020 and I'm going to click off of that so that that change takes effect and now I need to bold that so I'm going to select that text again and I can choose bold here, I can choose bold here I can control B, whatever method you like we just want to make sure that that is bolded and I'm also going to change that font size to 14 and now I'm going to change the the text to be dark blue this is where we would change text and it's actually this one sometimes the tooltips don't pop up so 
Um, unfortunately, it's really tough to do these examples if the tooltips don't pop up, but know that it's the second from the right. I don't think my IT lab's intent is to get you to guess. I think what they're trying to do is get you to do the right step and sometimes using the tooltip is the right step but for whatever reason sometimes that tooltip won't pop up in my IT lab it works fine in regular Excel just not in my IT lab next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the chart elements button and we're gonna display the primary vertical axis for the bar chart scrolling down here to my bar chart again select my chart and this is where we can add in different elements I'm gonna click elements and I want the primary vertical axis title so I can go over here and click on this area I only want the primary vertical if you click on axis titles it's going to give you both of those we only want the one and it's right over here I'm going to close down this by clicking on it again left clicking and I'm going to change this to job titles and then click off so my IT lab can recognize the change and we're going to apply a dark blue font color to that select it again and our good friend the dark blue color over here still no tooltips but it is the one that's second from the right we're going to change the horizontal axis to display units in thousands the nice thing about Excel is if you know what you want to change in a chart you can usually click on it and only it and get pretty good information out of the right click menu we're gonna format that axis we want it to look different than this so our format axis options come up and the option we really want is down here in the display units in this step we want to represent these numbers as thousands instead of as single digits it's hard to read this and it's hard to really interpret what's going on so a lot of times we'll build charts that show our data in the thousands it just makes it very much easier to read we're gonna close the the tool over here this task pane and that will complete that task now the next one we're going to display centered data labels if there's ever something in your pie chart that's not there that should be or that you want to add it's going to be probably available in this chart elements piece really handy tool um, now one thing you're going to see in this particular example again my screen resolution is really pretty small it becomes very difficult to do some of these steps uh, but hopefully by watching this video you'll see which ones I'm indicating and you'll be able to do the same thing as you go through the training as well so the chart elements we are adding in the data labels not all of them just the center data label and it's gonna put the values inside that pie chart it makes it a little easier for us to read um, not with this font size but it's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to interpret the data in that pie chart so we're gonna close that elements menu and now we're going to format those data labels just like when we click on any other things in these pie charts we can click on just what we want and we can format them all at once if we click on one of them again we can format just the one but in this case we do want to manipulate all of them we're gonna format those data labels it's a right click and then click format data labels and we are going to display the percentage data in there you can display all kinds of stuff uh, but we only want percentage not value and then we're gonna close that task pane and then even though we just closed that task pane we also want to change the font size to 18 points so that we can see this a little bit better they're still selected so we can choose 18 and that will complete that question and you can see the numbers there while they're not huge on my screen related to the pie chart they're much more readable the next one we're gonna do is we're going to put a background on our pie chart this is a fine pie chart it looks great but we want to actually make this jump out a little bit more so we're gonna put a background back here it's gonna be the blue tissue paper texture fill 
So we'll right click on our chart, we'll format the chart area, and we want a fill, and this is going to be a picture or texture fill. So it's another one of those places where it's really nice to have the tooltips. We may or may not get them here. Um, the texture that we want is the blue tissue paper. Now I happen to know it's this one. My tooltip is not popping up that's helping me out with that. And when you're in the real world, you're going to look at these and choose the one you want. My IT lab has one in mind for you to use. And it does happen to be this one, which is the blue tissue paper. So if your tooltips don't pop up, just remember it's this light blue one that kind of looks like water. And we're also going to apply the dark red solid fill color to the software apps developers slice. Which one is that? Well, we can highlight over these if you can't read the bottom of your chart, and it'll tell you with a pop-up that's of reasonable size exactly what is going on there. My tooltip works here. So we click on the chart, it selects them all, which is considered an incorrect action, but it's really part of the process. And then we click on that single pie piece again. We want this one to be dark red solid fill. So we choose solid fill and the color we want is dark red and it's this one that's the farthest on the left because it's the one from the standard colors so here we have the ability to customize these pie chart pieces to be any color we want Excel automatically is going to choose a color theme but we can change it if we want now we want the database administrator slice which one is that? Well it's this dark blue one. We're going to change that to gold, accent 4, lighter 60%. Select that pie piece. The solid fill is going to be the gold. This is the gold row. And it's going to be the lighter 60%. No tooltips, but it is the underneath that gold one. Go down two more, and it's going to be this one right here. and then we're going to close that format data point task pane. On the next step, we're going to apply some styling. Maybe we don't want to build all of these styles on our own. Maybe we want Excel to do it for us. The nice thing about Excel doing it for us is the colors tend to match well. So we can select our bar chart down here and we are going to go in and design this. In the chart styles gallery we actually want style 2. Without tooltips it's a fair guess to say it's the very second chart style and it is. So if you choose that one it will automatically format that. All of the fonts change which are all consistent. Um, they're all sans serif fonts. Um, and it just makes it look like it all fits together. We're going to filter the column chart here by excluding one of our data series. It's actually this gray one. So we're going to go to the chart filter menu and we will take out the number of new jobs. Now a common mistake here is expecting that change to take effect immediately. Many changes in Excel do take effect immediately, but this one we actually have to go down and apply. Now my laptop screen being small, I may not have recognized that at first. Um, through trial and error, you can notice that you do need to apply it first. And then we reclose that menu. My IT lab is able to detect that we did it correctly, and now we can move on to the next filter. Now we're going to exclude programmers and CIS managers. Same exact thing. We're going to pull out programmers and CIS managers and apply those changes. And then we close our chart menu much easier to read this chart with less data sometimes too much data just makes the whole thing a mess you really want to focus in on the data you're trying to present when you're making these charts and then on our next step we're going to make a new column in our table we're going to add in new information there we want to make a new column between the 2020 estimate and the number of new jobs. Anytime you're inserting a column, 
the assumption is always that it will go before wherever you're highlighted, wherever you're selected. If you're making a new row, it's going to usually go above by default. So we can insert our new column. Everything pushes over nicely. And the theme actually stays with us here. And we're going to insert line spark lines in the range. So we'll select our range, and we're going to go to Insert. And the spark lines area over here is what we're focused on. We're going to insert line spark lines. It's like a little tiny chart within your Excel document so that you can quickly and easily, just by looking, determine how that data is changing. So our data range that these spark lines are going to work with is going to be B6 to C12 as the data source. You can select that and then hit enter and then say OK and the spark lines will appear over here. We can adjust these and we can add more features to this. We can make it look a whole bunch of different ways. But what we're going to do is we're going to select markers. That's one of the things we need to do. And we're also going to apply spark line style dark number six. Uh, normally it would take a little hunting around with tooltips. This is the one you want. Um, without tooltips, just go one to the right of where you were. And apply the red spark line color. We're going to change the line to be a red line. Just an ordinary regular red. Not dark red like before, just the regular red. And that should complete the assignment and get you through this training. Hopefully that helps make it through some of the things that work a little bit unusually in my IT lab and helps you learn a thing or two.